Uh, I'm so sick of people saying that uh, that I'm like lonely and emotional and like associating me with this like longing for a woman or sad guy. Yeah, yeah, I hate that, man. It bothers me so much because I don't make the, you know, like I, I do make I do make music that makes you feel something, but you know, but you know, I, I just don't like I'm actually not that guy in real life. I'm very Hi guys, thank you guys for tuning in. So Jersey Drake, aka Mr. Champagne Poppy, just tied Michael Jackson's record for the male soloist with the most number ones. But does it really matter? See, Drake is an undeniable icon within himself, but I think he has officially dropped the ball with wanting to be the Michael Jackson's record. Considering streams versus pure sales have blurred the lines of genuine record breaking, does it even count? Drake has accomplished so much in his career, it's pretty undeniable. But Drake also falls flat in his growth in music. Not every artist is going to go through a level of musical growth to the extent of Jay-Z or Kendrick Lamar. But artists do reach a point where the main topic becomes an old topic. And unfortunately, Drake has fallen into that trap. You may ask, as like a super duper Drake fan, what can he do to actually render his musical reputation as the best to ever do it? And that answer is solely up to Drake. Drake had a niche to constantly revamp himself in music. Whether he wrote it or not, he was hitting the nail each and every single time. But from his initial release in 2009 to 2015, there was something different about Drake. Drake has and will always be Drake, but his music was sincerely something different from what other artists could really replicate. He was in his own lane. Drake wasn't exempt from being clowned though. No matter how many bangers he dropped, he was the butt of jokes and people didn't mind laughing at him. And Drake definitely with each drop, he knew that. Like yeah, he was hitting the charts, but if someone really tried to come in and knock him off his pedestal music wise, it was going to be stiff competition. Regardless of the charts, there was little lack of respect for his artistry. So once nothing was the same dropped, it was a stamp. Drake was hungry. He had that hunger, he had the drive to really put more thought and effort into his releases to prove that he was that nigga regardless of the way we clowned him. His consistency gave him that push to keep his name alive and gave him that GOAT status. He was untouchable. He kept his image up by constantly putting fuel in the newer artist's back that also kept him in touch with the younger crowd and gave him more respect. That Drake stimulus package actually meant a career catapult. But now, here we are in 2023 where his consistency is starting to wear off. It's becoming more tiring. Where you're releasing so much music, does your music even mean anything anymore? For someone of Drake's caliber, you're not leaving your fans hungry for more. When the releases have become so subpar, his hunger has really started to diminish because he's already accomplished, I'm sure, the majority of his goals. People doubted his sound. He proved them wrong. People doubted his street cred. We still doubt it, but he also won a rap beef, so who cares? You've gotten the Grammys, you've gotten the awards, you've gotten the accolades. You've reached an astronomical level of fame and fortune. And for Drake, it's just like, okay, now what? Now you have a new goal of beating one of the greatest artists to ever live's world record. But, I, uh, no. Unfortunately for you, boo, that's just not how it works. And that goes for a lot of artists, not just Drake. The music industry has always been a numbers game, but now it just seems like we reached a whole new height of bullshit. Quantity doesn't and will never equate to breaking records when it's not done seamlessly. Now let's run it back to the 70s when Michael Jackson first debuted. Michael has grown his career to the pinnacle of what it means to be a forever artist. Music fans wait to be among the first to buy Michael Jackson's new album. Everybody here is a Michael Jackson fan. I mean, he draws the, the biggest crowds in the world from young to old, and that's what everybody's here is for. We were here what, when Dangerous came out. We were here when Bad came out. So we're just here again. We'll be here when his next album comes out. Whether you pronounce it history or his story, this collection of 15 previous hits and 15 new songs is among the most hyped, most anticipated albums in memory. It's also already among the most. His impact has become something that lives generations on that very few will ever duplicate in this age. He's been able to break records based off of his talent, not off popularity and numbers. Where Drake has fumbled the ball is his inability to sit back and repower his passion in music. He wants to be beyond what is the best without knowing that he's the best already. Things get mixed up when people don't realize they're in an entirely different lane of their own. 
Artistry has become about numbers and not being the artistry itself. If you look at Beyonce, Renaissance was hands down her most experimental album. It was different than what her usual fans were used to. And for some, it was an absolute hit, but for others, it was a slow burn. But the time it took for people to listen, understand, and visually see the album, it has become one of Beyonce's most monumental albums. Mind you, she released the project, no videos, no nothing. Just listen, look at her tour, enjoy the artistry. Understand and visually see the album. She took a break and gave her fans anticipation for her new drop. And for this album, despite all her critical acclaims from her pre previous projects, gave her her first number one single. Since Single Ladies, over 10 years ago. Y'all hear me? Beyonce hasn't had a number one solo hit single since Single Ladies. It sounds crazy because you think with the way her impact has been so enormous throughout the 10 year period, she would have had a number one with Run The World, Drunk In Love, Formation, but no. Beyonce, when it comes to charts, she's not chart heavy and she realistically doesn't chase chart success either. I'm sure it's nice having back to back number ones and I'm sure she'll appreciate it. But when you already reach that milestone, it becomes old news. When you've already broken records off of your name alone, just because you really are that girl, charts won't matter anymore. You're not chasing Billboard success anymore because it doesn't mean anything. Billboard hits ain't buying your records, they're not keeping your name alive, and they most importantly, they're not that impactful. There's been so many artists that reached number one that later faded into obscurity. We know them as that one hit, but they're not relevant. If you're someone like Drake and Beyonce, who's already proven themselves in the industry, you proved you belong, but can you prove that you're here to stay? Beyonce's final leg for her tour has proven that she is one of the best female artists to ever live and she didn't need to devote endless drops to prove that. Drake is goaded as a rapper, releasing bodies of work that define a period of time easily. His music has nostalgia in it, but he doesn't have the proper sound that distinguishes him from the other rappers that are veterans because he's just releasing music just because. And that got me thinking, is he trying to break Michael's record because he feels like he's already reached his peak? I mean, Drake is timeless, just like any artist who was on top of the world. From Lil Wayne to 50 Cent to even Nicki Minaj, every artist, no matter who you are, reaches a peak. A couple things can happen from this. You either relish on the past of when you were on top of the world, reinvent yourself to a new world, or frolic on what used to be and remain stagnant with your musical growth. Drake has reinvented himself numerous amount of times, so we can check that out. But he's remaining stagnant. And that itself isn't helping him. He's trying to accomplish a new goal that sounds good on paper instead of continuing his musical legacy. Because now, when it comes to articles on hip-hop and legendary accomplishments, it has become a joke. Journalism has become payola, so it's become what is actually factual versus what they want you to believe. They want you to believe that some artists are more impactful than others or that the heights are based off of pureness and not inflated numbers. And what Drake is doing is lame because it's not real. Trying to be in the same scoring board as MJ when you guys aren't even in the same lane is odd. Cause why? Why not just continue to be the GOAT in your playing field and watch yourself grow into more success? Cause Thriller took over a month to even become number one. But the most major stark difference between the two is that we have to factor in that Michael's number one was strictly on his own. He carried his own songs from Dirty Diana, Billie Jean, Beat It. He didn't require features to help him chart, whereas the majority of Drake's number ones were featured songs, two with Rihanna, one with Wizkid. It doesn't take away from his number ones because he still did it on his own, but we can't blur the lines. And that reason alone is exactly why people respect things more when it's done organically. When there is authenticity, it doesn't leave room for question. People shouldn't be questioning your impact because it's already there. There should be no room for criticism. And now you're pushing. You're trying to prove yourself and this new goal in trying to justify your impact when it's not needed. Streaming has warped people's mind to believe that they can have just as much as the people before them with less effort. Drake is undeniably one of the best and impactful artists to grace hip hop and he has proven himself. But charts are not impact, quality is. If your music can stand the test of time, you will never die and he's already done that. He just needs to realize that since he doesn't want to be the artist that people said used to be good, he needs to evaluate the way he's going about his albums. Because it's always going to be about quality, not quantity.
guys that concludes today's video make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below and let me know what you think bye guys toodles